Hello Pinners, we've come to Canuck to see if uh, Jim can ride a hardtail, a real bike. So I realised last night, as my hub is knackered and I've got to send it off on my full sus bouncy, that because uh, I'm going to meet these at Canuck, and Sonny said he can borrow the Stanton, he's on his old pace. I have to say about the Stanton is uh, some of the sponsors aren't my sponsors. I actually realised last night I've never owned a hardtail as a like just a normal bike I've always <laughs> I've only ever had one as either a jump bike and the only other thing was a couple of years ago I had a fat bike so this is like a completely new experience after 20 years of riding probably the only hardtail I had was like my first cross-country bike in about 95 so um, I'm gonna get on this bike and see what it's like as you can see here at Pinned, we don't do things by halves. We have a very factory looking Stanton Switch Niner, which we've we've done a review on this already, haven't we? Yeah. So you can check out the channel for the reviews. Um, lots of nice kit on it. But the thing we've just fitted, and this is really worth a mention, we've got the DMR bar and stem, and there's something very special about this stem. Because if your steerer is cut too short, as this one kind of was, that bit there, the height, is only 35 mil, so it's like way lower than any other stem. So quite often, well, what does that mean, Sonny? Explain it. Let you explain why that's such a it good thing. It means that <laughs> he's on the spot now. It means that if you're stupid enough like I am, or even Jimmy's, yeah. to cut your steerer tube down to suit your bike, and then you want to transfer your components to another bike, you could probably save you a thousand quid yeah. on a pair of forks. Yeah, because once they're too short, if once you get too short, you knackered a longer steerer tube. Any, any uh, bike shop won't or advise you anything like less than, more than two mil, off the top of your steerer tube on your stem is, is dangerous. Yeah. So you, you get round it by having this much narrower, or should I say not as tall, stem. And it's a really nice looking stem, this DMR. I think it's a 40 mil long. I'll put all the specs on the screen now. And then we've got these 800 bars, which are very nice looking. They've got the 35 mil clamp. Um, that's it really. Did you get mine off? Hey? Did you get my old stem off? Yeah. Because I Loctited it on. Because I was paranoid. <laughs> really? Put loads of Loctite on it <laughs> and really bolted it on because there's like probably about that much sticking up and the bolt was just touch it like level with the top. Bloody hell. Well, the, actually, uh, that's worth mentioning with these because the main thing that you'd be worried about with it being lower is the bolts, but these yeah, are like massive, like they've got like six mil heads on them. Um, so they got loads more clamping power. Anyway, let's get ready and get out and ride. So we're just waiting around while everybody does their toilet duties. And uh, basically this vlog is going to be about just how different it feels to ride like a proper hardtail as opposed to a jump bike. For someone like myself who's completely used to a full sus, full bouncer enduro bike, that's all I've really ever ridden since I got back into mountain biking. Straight away noticeable is just how direct the drive feels to the back wheel without any bounce. Feels so much easier to ride, just to pedal. And when you sort of go to pop a wheelie, you have to watch you don't go off the back. It just comes up dead easy. Gonna have to be a little bit careful here for the bar width because these new bars are 800 width. I'm used to 780 and Canuck is renowned for some very narrow gaps between the trees. Could have some moments there. Sonny's the expert in the hardtail hooning so I've just got to follow him today. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Our, uh, I forgot to say, Pinners, <laughs> this is his first proper ride back after, what was it, three weeks? Yeah. Three weeks after uh, doing his ankle. Is it hurting now? Oh, that's good. Right, so the first test on here, compared to the full bounce, obviously I'm not on 
gnarly downhill tracks or like proper enduro but this is a good comparison and it's a real rocky bit and obviously the bike's going to shake me to bits on it so let's see what it's like this is always like at Canuck seems like the most pointless section in the world but it's definitely a good bit to see what they're like on rocks so there we go straight away you can feel obviously a lot more going on with the back wheel it's not soaking it up but it's very responsive you've got to work the bike a little bit more not let the suspension do it but yeah all right right bit of boardwalk coming up and a few little rough bits of route i think the fact that this is a 29er definitely takes away that mega harsh feeling that you'd get from a hardtail but i love the fact that these bits like now when i start to put my foot down it just drives so quickly you feel it when you like double these little sections up it's a lot harsher on your ankles but it is really rewarding pumping all these little holes brilliant I want one already. Right, the uphill test. Straight away. That direct drive into the back wheel. No bobbing. No wonder Sonny always looks so bloody strong up the hills. It says I'm weak. Right then. This ain't gonna last very long, is it? Your ankle will break. I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack now. So I'm going to follow Sonny down here. There'll be no heroics because his foot's still sore. And I've just reached down to do my uh, climb switch. It's that much habit. I reached down for a sec to do my climb switch. And I was like, oh yeah, don't need to worry about that. So obviously another thing you've got to think about that is ace for the hardtail, obviously. Maintenance and lack of it is brilliant. Ooh. Here! Go on. Get an idiot, so we're on the first downhill here. Uh, not really that rough. And Sonny knackered one of his tyres and didn't put the airliner back in. So I've ended up, he had all holes in it, running a tube for today. So I've got to run this at 30 psi. So you can feel every bump. It's not bad. It's nowhere near as bumpy as I thought it would be. When you pump these holes, the forward boost you get is incredible. Okay, so we've got some downhill steps here. These can be quite harsh. Quite a tricky little section here. Especially this one. Oh. Yeah, it's not that bad. There's those narrow, narrow trees we talked about. The other thing you've got to notice, the other thing you notice is about the, the fact you've got to be super precise riding the hardtail. So, really good for teaching you to get your lines right. Definitely a good training tool for the winter and also a good tool keeping your enduro bike in good nick. So Leanne always struggles with this hill and I'm going to get behind her and I'm going to coach you up here. If I get you up here, does that mean I'm a better person than Sonny? A better coach, don't get carried away. Sit further forwards on your seat than you normally do. See your elbows like that. Go like that, look. Drop them and sit further forwards. Then okay. all your weight's on the front wheel. Okay. And then spin quite a high gear so you're spinning fast. In That's it, remember seat forward, sit further forwards. That's it, arms down. Look up ahead, when you get to this first corner, this is the corner go right, get your front wheel right on the outside of it at the beginning. And then look round it, don't look down. 
Come on, keep it going, keep it going. Look round it, don't look down. Yes, I'm better than Sonny. I am better than Sonny. Now, same again. Look round the corner, don't look down. Yeah. Pin TV coaching available on request. So I'm following my mate Neil here. He's on the full bouncer. Nomad. And so it compares to that. You definitely got to watch it on these uh, little nasty stones that kind of these like round pebbles. Got no grip. What though really surprised me. You can tell you can just let it go a little bit more on certain sections, pulling away. But then I have got 30 psi in the back, it does skips me out a bit. If I had the airliner in and like 20, 25, I'd have so much more grip. First black section, I never ride this, always ride the red. And let's see what the hardtail's like on these. Oh yeah, definitely feel them more. Well, it's not bad. I'm pretty sure that the fact that I've got 160 forks on the front and the 29er wheels, whoa, nearly went off the edge sort of compensates for the fact it's a hard tail rolls over everything nicely bear with me i never do this but <laughs> it's definitely a bit harsher so this is like super rough and awkward really tight rocky turns also with having a hard tail it can make less challenging rides more fun it's a bit more of a challenge other things you've got to think about that are great. You know, I'm looking at the positives here. Obviously, there's going to be a few negatives. Really rough, gnarly thing. You're never going to be as fast. But certain things like you don't have to worry about clashing your pedals too much because you're not sinking into rear travel. One of the best things I've noticed today that's cool is when... Uh, when you go downhill into a berm with an uphill exit, it's um, the positive sort of bite and the feedback from your drive is so good. You don't lose anything through that bobbin. But like now, uphill, I can sprint. Whereas if I was on the full bounce there, I don't think I could be bothered to sprint bits like that. Picking the front end up over things like that, so much easier. Because again, you're not sagging into the travel. What's this, a road gap? Yeah, down here. Not only small. Oh, okay. So I'll we'll go off to the right. Yeah. Come off to the right and then you'll know where it is. Yeah. Okay. Trails off piste here at Cannon, so good. So much fun. Oh, I missed that one then. Followed you round that then, like a knobhead. Yeah, there, there. Ah! <laughs> so, like we were saying about having to be more precise on the hardtail. Got a couple of little gaps down here. I know they'll look nothing on here. But, uh, when I landed off that little road gap, I was too harsh on the front wheel. Let's see if I can get it right this time. On in. Yeah, got it. I've got this one out here. Bit of a case, but I managed it. Yeah, that's where you can feel 
the difference of a hardtail and a full sauce. It, you can feel every bump, can't you? That's uh, Pro Fells truck. Is it? Yeah. Great fun. Ian, come here. You didn't hold me up. No. I think the fact, uh, although this is a hard tail and it will get better speed from pumping the down slopes, yeah. you've got more traction. Yeah, yeah. And you've got 650 wheels. Yeah. So you can hit the turns a bit better. Yeah. So I'm gaining on you on the pedal and the pumping. Yeah, yeah. And you're hitting the turns faster. Yeah, it's got to just throw it into yeah. the corner. Suspension's going to work. Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting to see the difference, actually. Yeah. So your advantage with those small wheels and suspension is made up for by my advantage with the big wheels. Yeah. And no suspension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've just gone up a big, long biro climb where, I mean, Neil's pretty fit. So we were pretty similar up there. It didn't really feel any easier. Maybe easier than the full bounce 29, I don't know. But... Once you get onto this flat stuff, that's when you start feeling like a hero because the rolling resistance is so minimal. A bit more off piste here. It's got a lovely little section through the trees. All roots. So it does get rough after a bit, and this is where I imagine I would definitely be better on the full bounce. I'm amazed actually because I'm running the full 800 bars on this and I usually hate running. Hey, I'm using 780. I can really notice that difference. But it seems like better on a hardtail. Definitely can't get that on. Can't work out why. Whoa. Well, definitely starting to feel tired now. Nothing to do with a bike, nothing to do with a rider. Now, back at the trail centre now, and I'm knackered. But what a great machine. Had an absolutely brilliant day on this bike. Uh, it's totally opened my eyes to hardtail riding, which I always thought was a bit sort of you know a bit hipster a bit cool but it is so much fun and it's not really an option of if i will have one of these dan stanton it's an option of when <laughs> so hopefully you like this don't forget about the pinned hats don't forget about the pinned christmas ride check it out on our media thanks for watching keep it pinned <laughs>